hello guys once again welcome back to another android application development tutorial in this video here i'm going to show you in what order the activity lifecycle callback methods are invoked by the system when we launch an activity so we can create a new android studio project select md activity and finish so here the project is created in android studio so here i'm going to create one more activity so create another activity select empty activity i name it as a second activity so now we have two activities are available in this project so we are going to test the lifecycle callbacks for the main activity so now go back to the main activity layout file so here i add a button specify the constraints for the button sorry for the background noise i know there are too many too much noise in the background sorry for that so change the button title into start another activity okay so now select that activity and we can specify an on click method so i specify the method of start another activity okay so now we need to add one more button so here i place another button again the same thing specify constraints for the button specify the title as finish activity okay also we need some on click method for the button it does finish activity now go to the xml file so here we got two errors because we need to implement these two methods inside main activity class file so implement the first method now here i implement the second method okay so now the two methods available inside main activity class file so for here uh, i'm going to display some log message so that here create some method void show log and for this method we need one parameter say message so display some log cat message here specify the message tag as <coughs> life cycle test and print the message okay so this is the first life cycle method so this is the only one method you must implement it within your activity so in that method first thing you have you must call the super class implementation of this method for creating this activity so here uh, we call the super class implementation of that method and here by using the set content view we connect the class file and the layout file okay so this is the only one method you must implement within your activity so from that method uh, i'm going to call the show lock must method on create finish okay so now here i'm going to implement all the other life cycle callbacks so here i implement all the other life cycle callbacks first one is on start and here this is the uh, from every uh, life cycle method you must implement the super class implementation of that method so in every method you must call the super super keyword from every method uh, so in order to in order to identify the life cycle change uh, we call the sherlock message sherlock method with some message on it uh, here is the on resume on pause on stop on restart and on destroy method okay so from the start activity start another activity method as the name indicates we can start the newly created activity so call the start activity no intent first two parameter second parameter is the class name second activity dot class okay so from the finish method here i'm going to finish the activity manually for finishing an activity manually you can simply call the finish method so now we can test it 
so one virtual device is ready here so start the project run the project select that virtual device oh, we can open the lockad because all the message is showing in the lockad yes our project is now launched in this virtual device so we can filter the lockad window here the message tag is life cycle test yeah it's not working okay anyway i will run the project again so remove it run the project again yeah this one life cycle test so filter that method so these are the life cycle call bytes so when the activity started for the first time first method the system called the on create call bike method after that the system called the on start after the system called the on resume call bike method okay so now i am going to start another activity so here in this application another activity come into foreground so here the main activity is not completely visible so if the activity is not completely visible the system called the on stop method so when the new activity come into foreground first the system called the on post method then the system called the on stop method because here the previous activity is not completely visible uh, but here <coughs> the system called the on stop method but still an instance of that activity is available in the memory so when i come back to the activity again the instance is still available so the system called the on restart method on that instance and after on restart the system called the on resume so that that activity again come into foreground and the user can interact with it okay so now here I am going to make another interrupt for the activity. So now here I am going to make a call to this device. So now here I make a call. I attend that call. So in that case also this is another activity. So that activity come into foreground and our previous activity is not completely visible. So the system call the on stop method. <coughs> and before call the on stop the system call the on pause and after on post the system called the on stop but that activity is still in the memory so when i come back again the system called the on restart and after on restart it call the on start and after on start it call the on resume method okay so now i'm going to remove the delete the activity manually so click the finish activity method in that case the system called the on post on stop and finally call the on destroy method so in this case the activity completely removed from the memory that means the instance of the activity is destroyed so this is how the system called the life cycle callbacks of an activity i hope you understand the concepts of activity life cycle methods for getting more android tutorial updates please subscribe this channel now thank you for watching see you in the next episode